All right, we got a flashing check engine light. Oh, it's bad. I, I can barely accelerate. And I'm just glad it's not the GTR that's broken. There's like no pressure in the cooling system. That one is straight up cracked. Whoa, what is this? Look at all this stuff. This is so scary, guys. Don't fall in. This has got to be the issue. This has got to be it. No, I failed. We're in sport mode now. Let's see what this feels like. Place your guesses down below in the comments, but what if I told you that you could own a car with a powerful twin turbo V6 engine, all wheel drive, a six speed transmission with paddle shifters, a ton of aftermarket support, and this car even has super comfy, half leather, half suede heated seats with a push button start. And what if I told you that you could buy this car clean title for only about six thousand dollars have you figured it out yet well if not then let me introduce you to my new daily driver the lsc sho now it may be a little odd to compare a nissan gtr to a ford taurus but just like that's not your typical nissan this is not your typical ford it is the SHO model, which stands for super high output because this twin turbo V6 puts out 365 horsepower. And there are guys out there with simple bolt-ons E85 and a tune running 11 second quarter mile times, which is just as fast as a stock GTR, but for 10 times less the cost. I just won this clean title 2016 SHO for only $5,900. Now that's actually a very abnormal price. This car should have sold for roughly double that it's a clean title one owner dealer maintained Taurus that in the auction pictures looked absolutely mint but there's usually a reason you get about half off of a car at an auction so this generation show ran all the way from 2010 to 2019 there were little upgrades and a facelift throughout the years but they're generally all the same and you guys can find these private party from between five and ten thousand dollars all day depending on condition and if you want a little bit of a newer one they do get into the low teens normally so this is my first time seeing this car in person as well i just bought it sight unseen and it was on that side of the lot and they brought it around for me but so far it's it's all there you know poop stains included uh, it's a metallic gray and this has the optional 20 inch wheels and it's pretty loaded up these older as is auction cars don't get much of a condition report so all it says is that it runs that that's about it and i didn't bring the trailer i'm going to try to drive this back home from indiana to chicago it's not too far hang on before i attempt to drive the taurus back big shout out to my father-in-law his last name starts with a d and all the grandkids call him Papa D. So this is definitely one of my top three fans in the world. He you watches. Better believe it. That's right. He watches every video. Papa D knows everything legit street cars. And you guys met Mama legit street cars at the fill the van with cans event, but he was there as well. He comes to everything. A great guy. And before my career on YouTube, I actually modified his 1999 Regal GS with a supercharged 3800. So you know it's got the ported blower, smaller pulley exhaust, tune, injectors, and all that good stuff. And we were going to drive that, but his transmission went out. It was rebuilt 17,000 miles ago, but like over a year. So the warranty's up. They won't cover them at all, which is ridiculous. So now I'm looking for possibly a built transmission for his Regal GS, and I might make an episode on Papa D's Regal. Let me know in the comment section if you want to see that and maybe him driving it. It's pretty quick already. All right, Dad, what uh, what car do you want to drive? The Taurus well, or the well, GTR? The GTR. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I drove it up here, so now it's his turn. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do you do a launch control on this thing? <laughs> Get out of here. We're just driving back. <laughs> he wants to do launch control already. We're going to sit in some horrible Chicago traffic, but uh, we'll have Papa D back again for sure. Before we hit the road, I just got to take a quick look at this car and make sure, you know, it's going to drive home. So I know that it starts, but let's really listen to this thing. Fires right up. Um, currently no warning lights which is kind of crazy and it's really hard to tell in the auction pictures but there were some signs that this car was in really good condition you could see that it had newer tires the interior didn't look cut up and destroyed and of course i looked up the vin dealer maintained at the same dealer one owner that is a great great sign but typically a 2016 sho like this would go more for like 10 to 12 grand and i got it for 5900 so what's wrong with it all right here we go 
It's a reading drive. Our steering works well. This has electronic power steering. Uh, of course, this thing didn't have much gas, so we're getting gas. We're driving the SHO. A little quarter throttle there. Shifting well. Alignment's off a little bit, not too bad. And we're up to 60. I think we're in our final sixth gear now. These did have issues with the torque converter, so I was wondering if they traded it in for that. It's possible, but so far, transmission seems great. All right, we got a flashing check engine light. We made it about five miles. It's running horribly, horribly bad right now. All right, <laughs> that's more like it for an auction car. Great, this thing is definitely misfiring. Oh, it's bad, I, I can barely accelerate. Now it's starting to slow down. And I don't see Papa D anywhere. I don't know where he went with the GTR, so. All right, let me give him a call, I gotta pull over. Well, out of all places to pull over, the first thing off the highway is a Nissan dealer. And I'm just glad it's not the GTR that's broken. I'll take a broken Ford any day over a broken GTR. I get a faint smell of oil, could just be leaking valve covers. Just kind of curious, this is weird. There's like no pressure in the cooling system. I literally just got off the highway. That's, that's odd. Let's see here. Don't do this if you have a hot engine, but there's no pressure in there. Yeah, it looks green. Doesn't look like any oil or anything's mixed in there. Let's plug in our Carly. Lights are on. We have Carly connected. This is a phenomenal OBD scanner because it uses a really nice phone app. And so let's go to diagnostics. We have three in the PCM, cylinder three misfire, cylinder four misfire, and random misfire. Great. The first thing I would think of with misfires would be ignition. But what's awesome about Carly is even if you're not a mechanic, you can enter smart mechanic and this will break down potential consequences. So engine runs on reduced power because not all cylinders are active and you might have a warning light on. And the most important part is it will help you with troubleshooting. First thing, ignition coil spark plug definitely where I would go. And then it'll even teach you about how the systems on the car work. So this has direct injection. That could be a possible issue with this as well. Carly Smart Mechanic is just an excellent resource to learn about all sorts of different issues with your car. And it doesn't just stop there with Carly. You can also reset service maintenance indicators. You can check out live data. So to help you further diagnose an issue. Oh, and this is great used car check. So right now this is going to check the mileage in multiple control units because they can still mess with odometers, but they'd have to change the mileage in every control unit to really fool you if you have Carly. Carly has detected no tampering and check this out. It checked with nine different computers on the car. All right, well, this is good. The check engine light's not flashing anymore. And these are the only codes for the Taurus. Everything else is good. It scans all these other modules. So let's go ahead and clear out these codes for now. All right, we're good there. No more check engine light. I just cleared out the codes and it's running good. It was definitely shaking before. It had a current misfire. Yeah, Dad, just rev it up to like 1,500, 2,000 RPM, something like that. And it's running good right now just by clearing the codes out. So I don't know what's going on. I think we're gonna be okay to drive it. I'll keep the scanner in the car, kind of monitor things. But man, on the highway, there was a one point where uh, I thought it was an issue with the transmission. It was like, Bruh! and then the, the thing started flashing. So. It's, yeah, something's going on. This might have been why they traded it in. We're going to take off soon and try and make it back to Chicago, but I'm going to leave you guys a link down below to Carly Connected Car. They can also code in a lot of really cool convenience features. So in the past, I've coded in lap timers into the instrument cluster of Audis. If you have a BMW that won't do one touch for the windows when the door is open, you can code that out. You can even open and close exhaust flaps with Carly. It's truly amazing. But you're definitely going to want to check out the link down below to see what Carly can do specifically specifically for your car because there are different options depending on your make and model. Now, the free version of the app is super powerful, so you can check all of your codes and do diagnostics and stuff like that. And the best part is if you guys click on my link down below and use code LEGIT24, you're gonna get 15% off your very own Carly OBD scanner and coding tool. So check out the link down below. Wish me luck on this ride. Let's hit the road. When we were getting on the interstate, there was a SUV behind me and we got on, we're following a truck. I wanted to get in, into the next lane to get around the truck, but they wouldn't let me because they came swooping behind and then alongside and they're giving me the thumbs up and <laughs> and they're filming, filming the car as I'm 
I'm driving it and they're, <laughs> they're passing me. <laughs> <laughs> That's that GTR lifestyle. Yeah. This thing gets a ton of attention, especially in red. Yeah. This, on the other hand, gets no attention at all. Looks like the most mundane, normal car ever because it kind of is. Look at this really nice backup camera. This thing is sweet, especially for the money. Look, it's got parking aids, so it'll start beeping at me if I'm getting close to something like that. Oh, wait, what? Vehicle coming from the front right. Did it, did it know about that one? Well, that's pretty cool. It's got lane departure assist on the mirrors too. So far, so good. We're back in Chicago from Indiana, which if you guys know the area, this is not a good place to break down. So yeah, I cannot wait to get back on the highway. And also I found out that this thing has massaging seats. Oh, I gotta try this out. Massage, oh no way, it's, it's working. I had no idea, oh on my butt now. I gotta say, I have a lot of lower back problems being a mechanic for so long. This is so nice. This is the kind of shake you wanna feel, not a not an engine miss. I'm driving through the south side of Chicago, gotta get some Twista Kanye. I don't know if Jamie Foxx is from Chicago, but the other two are, <laughs> it just seems fitting. All right, we're getting back on the highway. Last time when it started missing, I was accelerating just a little bit, so it might've gotten into some boost. I wonder if that's what's making it mess fire because it idles and just drives around town perfect. All right, let's see here. Give it a little throttle. Oh, it's, oh yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> There's definitely a correlation with throttle position and the engine misfiring. And I'm going about a quarter half throttle, which is probably about where it would start building some boost. And this engine is direct injected, which means that the intake valves could be heavily carboned. And sometimes on engines like this, you'll have a misfire present itself under load or under boost. So I gotta stay out of boost before we get back to legit street quarters. But then we're digging right into this engine. I wanna see how bad these valves are. I got Papa D in the lead right now. So I've been staring at the back of the GTR for like a half hour. Guys, what do you think of the black part above the tailpipes? That's not factory. Do you like that? This is what the back end of a red GTR would look like without them. And here is mine with them. I'm, I'm, I kinda think I'm just, I'm definitely gonna take those off because they weren't done very nicely, but I think I think I might just leave it off and just go with the red. All right, we made it back to legit street quarters. And it runs great with no load, but even with a little bit of throttle, it'll start shaking like crazy. Let's get it on the rack, let's dig in. So let's go ahead and take off this SHO beauty cover, easy enough. There it is. Something I noticed right away is this valve cover looks to be much older than this. It looks brand new and the PCV valves are built into the valve covers on a lot of these Fords and I think that's the case here. So it's very possible that this one failed and they had to replace the entire valve cover. Not the best design for, you know, like a $2 PCV valve. That could have worked. I'm gonna start off by removing this coil. Now pull the plug out and it's one eight millimeter. And this could be a bad ignition coil or two. These definitely look to be original. They're definitely Ford coils, 155,000 miles. But let's start off with checking the plugs. Typically, if you have a misfire, you wanna go after the ignition system first. Let's see what we got, what do we got? Huh, okay. I don't think these are new. Oh, wow, that one is straight up cracked. Look at that, there's a crack. You guys see that line right there? I, I didn't do that, it didn't crack coming out. And uh, yeah, these are Ford spark plugs and they might be kind of old. Look at this, this other side is even more cracked. I went and bought brand new Ford spark plugs. The gap is supposed to be right around 30 thousandths, which is accurate. And then if we take our old plug, it does look worn out. I have a 35 thousandths gauge in here and it's tapping around very loose. So this one's probably at 40 thousandths, this is at 30 thousandths, which could indicate that this is very, very old. I believe the spark plug are due to be replaced at 60,000 miles. So this could have been done at 60 and then these have about 90,000 miles on them. That actually seems like it might be pretty accurate, but either way, let's replace all the plugs and just see if that fixes it. If it doesn't, we'll have to dig deeper. And if it does, we're gonna still dig deeper. I wanna see how bad these intake valves are. And I'm taking this PCV line out. Now we can get to these coils much easier. Unplug a couple more coils. Spark plugs are definitely easy on the Ford Taurus SHO. Do these at home, save money. All right, let's see how these spark plugs looked. How's this guy looking? Sometimes old spark plugs do crack on the way out, so it's, it's hard to know. 
if that one was cracked before. Okay, this one's cracked too. Um, yeah, these things are probably just falling apart right now. That's pretty bad. I've only seen really old spark plugs crack like that on their way out, especially when you have such a straight path here. It's not like we're at a weird angle and we're messing the spark plug up. I mean, we're right on it, just like that. Okay, it's the first one that's not cracked. But honestly, it also could be that difference in the spark plug gap when you get into boost. It's not gapped properly at all, and it won't spark properly, and then you have misfires. Makes sense. Guys, these spark plugs are falling apart. I couldn't get my socket in one of the rears, and look at this, the porcelain's just broken off. This has gotta be the issue. This has gotta be it. All right, I got all the plugs out, and we got the bore scope, so let's take a look. Okay. Uh, cylinder looks good, everything looks clean. Little bit of carbon, but really not that bad at all. Pretty clean in there. What do we got? This piston's up quite a bit. Yeah, pretty good. All right, well, these spark plugs are becoming a real pain in the butt. Look at that piece of porcelain just waiting to go inside of the cylinder. So this is actually kind of scary, but I have an idea. I have a very long Q-tip. This is out of a diesel injector cleaning kit. And you know, I got my MB sunroof grease, which is getting low. I think with the boroscope in there, so I can see, I can just attach the piece of porcelain to the MB sunroof grease and it would have saved the day, I think. Here we go. This is the weirdest thing I think I've ever done in my life. Uh, okay, we're down. This is so scary, guys. Don't fall in. Go to the center of Greece. Oh, okay. Oh, man, guys. Oh, this is so bad. No, it didn't work. I didn't get it, and it's way close to the hole now. This is getting real. I need to get it away. Oh. No, I failed. I gotta think of something else. Yeah, if I don't have a good grip on that thing with, with the sunroof grease, pulling it up, it could fall right in. Ugh, this stinks. All right, guys, I, I have it coming up. Oh, get out of here, get out, get out, get out. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, uh, oh, I got it. I got it, Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease. It lubricates sunroofs and retrieves pieces of porcelain that can destroy your engine. I mean, what can't it do? Honestly, this, this really was not fun though. I mean, I'm glad we got it out, but geez, spark plugs, stop. Stop breaking. So this is weird. This is the plug from cylinder three back there. And this is not my MB sunroof grease. This is a bunch of dielectric grease or something that someone put on there. And this is a much, much newer plug, which is a little scary. Why did they replace one plug on the cylinder that was misfiring? This was dealer maintained. I looked through the service history. It seemed like they bought everything. It, it is very odd that they didn't do plugs recently, except for this one. That is a little mysterious. I mean, they did that whole valve cover. Why wouldn't they do spark plugs? I don't know. All the old plugs are out. So I'm gonna go back together with the new ones and we're not gonna to take these over to Gapplebee's to get re-gapped. Even if I want to tune this and run it on some ethanol, a lot of guys are running the factory gap. So I'm just going to leave it alone for now. And we'll thread these guys in by hand. And these have a taper to them. So we just need to turn them about that. That's it. That's tight. So with spark plugs, you typically have two types of seals. A washer like this that does get crushed, or in the case of the SHO, we just have a tapered seal. With the taper, you're only turning it like a sixteenth of an inch. Plugs are done on this bank, and I like to spray a little bit of silicone onto the coils. It just makes them kind of slip onto the plug easier. And then when you push down, you kind of, yeah, you get a really nice like positive engagement. You know, it's clicked on. I want to look in the cylinder that had the new plug. Piston's up quite a bit. Okay, can't see too much. That has me a little bit worried that there was an issue on that cylinder and maybe the dealer or a shop was like, we'll try putting a new plug in and see if the misfire goes away. But if it doesn't, it's gonna need X, Y, and Z. That costs a lot of money and then they traded it in. That's possible. One new plug makes no sense. All right, well, you know what time it is. It's compression test, at least on that cylinder time. Normally I would do this with all the plugs out, but I put those in. I, I didn't think we need to do a compression test. Everything looks great on this car. Oh, but here we are, better safe than sorry. All right, guys, here we go. Do we have compression? Okay, all right, yeah, we got a ton of compression, that's great. Well, the mystery continues. One brand new spark plug, a brand new valve cover back there. Also, very weird. I'm gonna take a minute just to look through this car because it's like the guy just got up and left. His garage door opener is still here. There's a bunch of stuff in the cup holder. What do we got in here? Oh, we got the wheel lock, that's nice. There's receipts, some piece of trim that I haven't discovered is missing yet. All right. Owner's manual, let's see what we got in here. Usually these cars that have been maintained that the dealer have a ton of receipts, but nothing there. All right, here we go, here we go. Your vehicle documents. This is where he bought it. 
Uh, tire care stuff. Oh, this is a tire wheel paintless dent and windshield care. I gotta, I gotta see if that's still valid. I could have a warranty on that stuff. Whoa, what is this? 35. Oh, is this the car? Oh, look at this. They traded in a car for this one and they bought it brand new. Yeah, it's the one owner. <laughs> a ticket for driving with no insurance. Okay. Retail installment contract. Oh, this is the finance stuff. Okay, whatever. This looks like all the new car purchase things. All right, here we go. We got a brake job that was done. 78,000 miles and replace some tires. It was a little while ago too. Now this is more stuff on the purchase of the car. Great. Need receipts, people. In-ground vinyl liner skimmer. Okay, no. I'm looking for some kind of dealer receipt that points to what's going on here. Here we go. All right, here's one from January of 2024, this year. Oh my gosh, what is this? Customer states vehicle had no heat. Notice coolant uh, was low, topped off. Heater started working fine. Oh, get out of here. No, it had a water pump and timing chain kit done. Guys, I literally already ordered these parts because I like that was one of the notorious issues with these engines is that to get to the water pump, you have to take apart a lot of the engine. It's run by the timing chain. And I wanted to show you guys how to do it. It was literally just done like three months ago. Yeah, look at this, 5,000 miles ago, not even. So they did the water pump, intake, timing cover, timing chains, all that stuff. Wow, how much was that? Almost $2,700 at the dealer. Okay, well, cool for the car. Really wanted to show you guys that job though, but I'll do that. Okay, what is this? Oh, this is from last month thousand miles ago oh no what is this customer states inspect for cel check engine light that's been coming out intermittently since the water pump installed cover cylinder head oh that's gonna be the valve cover i think replace spark plug found oil leaking from rear valve cover removed number two coil which is the one in the middle there that was new and spark plug hole was full of oil Found the valve cover to be cracked, installed new right side valve cover post road test there's a misfire in cylinder to replace the spark plug uh it says road test and repair verified okay and that's it you didn't pay anything for that they just covered it under warranty definitely explains everything it's been a thousand miles since then i i don't why wouldn't they do all the spark plugs that makes no sense the guy spent 2700 bucks on a water pump what is this one okay these are the tires all right sweet um guys i don't know we definitely could have been getting a misfire on the other cylinder because of all those you know the plugs were in horrible shape but let's get some plugs back in here and drive it it's got compression on that cylinder it could have a bad injector i don't know this could be a really awesome deal. Yeah, everything's back together. Let's fire this thing up. All right. Pretty much sounds exactly the same as it did before. Nice and smooth. All right, let's go off for a ride. We should know right away before I wasn't able to get much past a quarter throttle. This thing has Xenon headlights as well. That's really cool. It's a very rainy day. We got good wipers. Let's see if we can go past a quarter throttle. That's about half. Oh, we're good. Oh yeah, yeah, I would have misfired by now for sure. I mean, when I was getting on the highway, I had to be like really, really careful on the on-ramp or it would start misfiring. It actually felt like a bad converter. Like I thought there was a big trans issue at first before I saw the flashing check engine light. It was like, -na -na. like oh, that's why it was so cheap. A little bit more gas. Oh man, the trans is great. <laughs> this thing runs great. It just had broken spark plugs. What? No way. All right, let's hit this from a dig. There we go, boost power. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Guys, if you just started watching the channel recently with my GTR purchase and you're like, how does this guy get so lucky? I seriously encourage you to watch some of my other videos. This just started happening over the course of these last two car purchases. Before that, I had a ton of really bad luck. And for the last few years, you know, every once in a while, I mean, I buy broken cars, all right? So most of the time, it's not like this. I've had plenty of bad engines, bad transmissions, bad everything. I'm, this is just pure dumb luck at this point with this car. That's the gamble you take at the auction. I took the gamble and I won, but I've definitely lost before. But I mean, it shifts perfectly. It drives perfectly. It runs perfectly. I love it. It's super comfortable. It's in excellent condition, but you know, I gotta go make things complicated. We, we gotta go back to the shop. We gotta give it the full legit street cars treatment. We're gonna do all the fluids, a bunch of maintenance, and we're gonna rip this intake manifold off and take a look at the valves. These valves have to be caked up and we could probably free up at least 400 more horsepower by cleaning them.
guaranteed. I've let this thing sit overnight and cool off. You wanna do that if you're gonna be touching engine parts, they get hot. But right now we are going to remove the intake to get to the valves. Connector here, pull this off the throttle body and undo, still here. All right, there we go. And this is interesting. They call this the noise maker and it has something to do with intake sounds, I guess. We'll undo a couple of hoses and lines. Just like that. This intake generally looks pretty, pretty cut and dry. Disconnect some engine harnesses and more connectors. All right. Good job, Ford. This is great so far. All right. Let's see if we can get this turbo intake pipe off. Get off. Okay. Jeez. There we go. I think we just kind of need to move this guy out of the way. That's good. Ooh, I know what this is. This is our boost solenoid. So this controls the reference to the wastegates. Hmm. Okay, just need you out of the way for now. I'll leave you alone for now. All right, pull this up out of the way. Get out of here. Let's connect this. Stop it. Oh, we got coolant. Yep, we're gonna have to drain some coolant. Not the worst thing in the world. All right, we are going to drain this basically brand new coolant because they would have had to drain all of this when they did the whole front timing cover water pump thing. Seriously, I have this thing like all the way out. That's what we're getting. This is a horrible like engineering nightmare to get to this. Oh my gosh. All right, doing this with my knuckles, basically. All right, there we go. That's gonna take a while. This coolant is very, very nice and new. This is gonna take some time, so let's uh, let's take a look at the condition of this Taurus. Let's see what I bought. I took a peek underneath at the auction and saw right away that the floors are in excellent shape. And this was a Michigan car its entire life. Could have been somewhere in Michigan where they don't use road salt because even the exhaust, which looks original, is in excellent condition. Like everything is nice. You don't really see this on a lot of Midwest cars. So I was a little scared of buying one from Michigan, but overall, we're good. I mean, a little bit of corrosion on stuff like this, that's no big deal. But, oh, this is really cool. Look at that. It's got rear adjustable toe arms. You never see that. There's usually no adjustments for the alignment in the rear on a lot of cars, even performance cars, but the show's got it. Here's our differential bone dry. Floor pans are just in excellent condition. Doesn't look like this thing's ever been wrecked. And yeah, this exhaust is intact. The subframe's in good shape. The shocks don't seem to be leaking and everything seems pretty tight. Bushings are in good shape too. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we got a little bit of a leak right there. No big deal. Stop making that noise. There we go. The engine looks great. Bone dry, factory exhaust. And oh yeah, this is where you can see the RTV from them taking the timing cover off. Now, this is quite the, the fun job to do. You have a frame right here and a harmonic balancer. Stop it. And just a big, big job to remove this. There's just, there's no room at all. Coolant is all drained. I'm getting this pipe completely out of the way. This thing is gonna be annoying. The other hose is a nightmare to get to, so that's good enough. I need to get this air box out of here to look at the air filter. There we go. Oh, look at this. This thing was modded. <laughs> it's got a K&N air filter. Oh my gosh, though. Wow. That is very, very plugged up. I think this has got to be the worst air filter I've ever seen or K&N at least. I gotta say guys, this car is so weird. It was maintained at one dealer and on the Carfax, it looks like he just bought everything except there was only one new spark plug. Why wouldn't you do the other five? And, and this, it's either the guy or like the worst dealership service writer ever who just didn't want to make any money at all and just didn't sell them the easiest, most basic stuff. I gotta say, this thing didn't feel all that fast. It, it did feel a little choked up. I mean, this would definitely do it. There's no air getting into this engine. I can't wait to see these valves. Guys, I, I just don't think you understand how bad this is. I mean, every pleat is just clogged with what's turned into basically mud. Wow, this, this thing's probably got 150,000 miles on it or something. Ugh, I mean, okay, the DeLorean air filter, that was the worst one I'd ever seen, but oh man, I'm, I'm super excited to drive this again now. You know, after I clean this. Got these turbo tubes just everywhere. Just get in the way. Okay, gigantic coolant hose coming off. Excellent, we didn't lose anything. And we got some heater hoses right here. I gotta get a good tool for this. There's a better way to get these clamps. There's a really nice tool. I have one at my house. I've had it for like 20 years. I, just, I need a second one, you know, for here where I do all my work now. 
don't know why that thing is at home. Okay, I think I've disconnected everything. There is a lot attached to this intake, but now we just have some bolts. And let's go around by hand loosening these up and then we can use the gun. Okay. All the bolts are out. She's definitely loose. All right, I had to get a metal fuel line out of the way. And now, now, it should come off. There's so much stuff in the way. It pays 3.3 hours to r and the intake. That's without cleaning the valves. I mean, I'm only like 45 minutes in, but it's kind of a pain, sort of. Get out. Oh, there you go. Got it. Here are the intake valves and the intake runners. And this is pretty bad. Wow, look at that. Now I've cleaned a lot of direct injected valves before. These are the ones on my 2007 335i and they were very, very caked up, not the best, but the Cadillac Escalades that I've owned, they got the PCV system down right. Those things look pretty good. But yeah, we don't have too much of a buildup on the top of the valve there but everything else is pretty bad. Here's another one, pretty much the same. And here's another one, and I must say very, very consistent. I'll definitely give you guys a before and after when we're done cleaning. This is very satisfying, and I'm gonna show you two different methods. One is a little bit more DIY than the other. We're gonna pit these two against each other, so I'm gonna make a comparison with cleaning the valves using this cool little contraption and using chemicals. But no matter how you're cleaning your intake valves, the first thing that you have to know is that the intake valves need to be closed. If the valves are open at all, don't perform any cleaning whatsoever. So if your valves look like that, you're not ready to clean those. But if they look like this or like this, you're good to go. It's very important, just wanna make that clear. So I'm gonna start with the first method and that's cleaning these valves chemically. So you can buy something like this from CRC Intake Valve and Turbo Cleaner or Brake Clean Carbon Choke Cleaner, basically anything that attacks carbon will work. And your first step is simply spraying this on the valves. So now we have this bubbling away and loosening up the carbon while the valves are soaking. We gotta clean this air filter so it's dry and ready. I figured I'd bring it out here and, and return this dirt and debris to mother nature. Oh, man. Wow. Beat it on this no skateboard or bicycles allowed on bank property sign that came with my building. I, I don't get this. It really works well for cleaning air filters though, I'll tell you that. All right, that's much better. Go back, there you go. Fertilizer for my garden. All right, so your next step is cleaning it with water and you want the water to go on the clean side so it pushes the dirt out this way. Don't go this way or you're gonna embed it even more. So we'll get this thing nice and wet. And then you can buy air filter cleaner, but if you're kind of running out like me, you can use some general degreaser. And we'll soak this on both sides. All right, so look at all that. Woo! Years and years of Ford Taurus show juicy goodness. Oh man, this stuff just doesn't end. Oh man, wow. All right, we are looking much, much better. I'll probably give this a couple more rounds of cleaning, but yeah, clean your air filters, people, or just replace them with paper air filters. This doesn't make that big of a performance difference. And at this point, you can go in with little pick tools and just basically start scraping away at all of this nastiness. Get out. Something else that works really well is a wire brush like this. And this is basically just like brushing your teeth. We're just getting all this carbon up and it's gonna turn very gooey. Yeah, check it out, it just turns into goo. So it's really important to get in here and scrape because there is a lot of carbon buildup you can see down in here. If you've ever wanted to be a dentist and you, you weren't able to, this is your time to shine. All right, get yourself some tools. This is basically like removing the plaque and look at all this, look at all that. Woo! Let me tell you, very satisfying to get this carbon off. So we're just going around here and just scraping away, just like that. Scrape, scrape, scrape. All right, I'm just doing a bunch of, bunch of this. And then you can drop your tool in there. Yeah, all right, and then I have a few different wire brushes that we can get in with. All right, once you've done some cleaning, you can vacuum this up. <laughs> This is what it looks like after round one. So we're still basically in the soaking phase and it still looks pretty nasty, but watch this. I'm gonna just do a little bit of brake clean in here. And then with a rag, we can go in here on the intake port itself 
and this will get a lot of that off. And here's what it looks like now. So it's pretty easy to get these walls done and you can see why some people port and polish their heads. See how rough the surface is? All that could be smoothed out and enlarged. But I'm not gonna do that to the show. We're not doing ported heads on this thing. It probably wouldn't be worth all that much, but, but you can see how rough the castings are. Scrape, 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 scrape. <laughs> um, I want to show you a really good scrape scrape tool. Uh, it's by Sonic. It's totally not meant for this at all. This is meant to slide O-rings off and seals and stuff, but this works so well. I'll leave a link down below, but it just, it gets around the valve and just everywhere. It's amazing. And if you want to be a dentist, you can use it on your teeth too. So clean. All right, now we can vacuum all of that up. And basically you're just going back and forth, scraping, brake clean. Uh, if you have the carbon cleaner spray, whatever you wanna use there, rags and little brushes. You're just gonna keep going, probably take you about 30 minutes to get it pretty clean. So let me finish this up and I'll show you. Oh, yes. Tanya, you think you get it clean and then you get a nice chunk like this, sweet. And after about 30 minutes of cleaning, this is our final result. And just as a reminder, this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like after. Now, just like any type of cleaning, you can spend as much time on this as you want. You can make it spotless in there, but there's definitely a point of diminishing returns when you're cleaning valves, even if it looks a little darker in there. If you've cleaned all the major chunks of carbon out, that's about as good as it's gonna get. It's gonna look kind of black just after a couple hundred miles of driving. So, you know, clean it as well as you want, but that's a realistic job spending about 20, 30 minutes just for those two valves. Now, let's compare that to another method, which uses gold. And by gold, I mean crushed walnut shells. Now, this method is a little bit less DIY than the chemical method because you need to buy some stuff. You need to buy this tank, this nozzle. You must have compressed air. That's a made in Italy. Like a me. I'm, I'm just kidding. I was born in America, but my mom was made in Italy. And you have to go out and buy a little adapter piece like this for about 35 bucks. This is specific for this engine and it fits in just like that. So that's why I call the chemical method more DIY because you can go buy brake clean and rags and brushes at the auto parts store. You don't really need a ton of equipment. First step is to attach the adapter tool into our vacuum. And then this is an air gun that's going to spray out the walnut shells. And we're gonna stick this through here and then we'll be able to kind of move it around and the abrasive walnut shells should break up the carbon, but also walnut shells are pretty soft. So if you did accidentally get some inside of the cylinder, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I just don't recommend doing it. Just have the valves closed, cover up all the other ports and everything, but uh, it's not like glass beads that will like instantly destroy your engine if it gets in there. So anyway, we are gonna stick this guy in here, this in here, turn on our vacuum. <laughs> And blast away. So unfortunately, I can't really show you anything inside right now, but just imagine walnut shells beating up on carbon. Like, get up out of here, carbon. It's my block. So we're gonna do this for about three to five minutes, but you can already see on the right that valve is cleaned up a bit. And uh, yeah, it's just hit or miss. You have to continue to take the gun back out and see what you've done. Another option, if you don't wanna buy this tool, and honestly, sometimes this works better because you can see, just stick the vacuum right here. And you can blast your walnut shells this way. This way you can see a little bit better at what you're blasting. Much better, much easier. Obviously this is a little bit messier. The tool is really nice for keeping things clean, but if you have a stubborn spot that you need to see, it's an option. After a few minutes of walnut blasting, this is what we have. The top of the valves look really, really nice, but it is difficult to aim the nozzle at the walls. Eventually you'll get this with the walnut blasting, but there's nothing wrong with going in there with a pick and just helping them out a little bit, kind of agitating everything, just like that. It's free. Takes a few minutes. Look at all this stuff that just scraped right off. All of this carbon, wow. Woo! Look at that, much better. All right guys, after about 20 minutes with the walnut blaster and a little scraping, but no brake clean. I did not use any chemicals in here at all. This is your final product. So it is much, much better looking than the side we did chemically. So here's what this side looked like before the walnut blasting and here is after. So most professional shops will do the walnut blasting. That is the preferred method, but the other one works pretty well for you DIY guys at home. So anyway, I'm gonna go around with the pick and the walnut blaster mint all of these out. 
and then we're putting the intake back on our new air filter and we're gonna go see I mean, will this thing make turbo noises? I don't know. Is it gonna be faster? I think so. All right, all of the intake valves are spotless. We have new seals on the bottom of our intake manifold. Let's put this gigantic mess back together. Come on now, pass that engine. This is the hardest part of the whole job right here. I'm just kidding, it's really not that hard. Oh, there she is. Just gotta find the sweet spot. Gotta do the old show intake shuffle. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. It's like a Nintendo cheat code, really. There we go, that's just ram the bolts right in. It'll be good. Bolts are all in, zip them down. We're gonna do our first pass, 89 inch pounds. Satisfying clicks. Your second pass is a 45 degree angle. Honestly, you don't have to get this perfect. I mean, that, that's it basically right there. This is an aluminum intake. We're gonna be just fine. Honestly, you can just, you can really just do these by feel. 45, click. Now it's just a matter of reconnecting everything. Lots of nice satisfying clips right there. Nice and factory, beautiful. Oh yeah, where are you boost controller? Don't you hide from me, boy. Don't increase my duty cycle, please. Please. Look at this, Ford only uses one screw for the map sensor. It's not threaded on this side. Look, it's actually loose. What? I mean, I get the cost savings of that screw, but seriously, the map sensor should have two screws. Like everybody uses two screws. Factory intake piece with the noise maker. Going back in, there we go, boost solenoid going back. And the boost solenoid holder, kind of cool, I guess. And more intake pipes going together. Outside of the air intake box, which we need to clean, everything is buttoned up. We need coolant though. So even though this has pretty nice coolant in it. We're just gonna do a coolant flush. It's a good enough car, it deserves it. Drink up, little buddy, drink up. If you guys don't have one of these really cool funnels, I highly recommend them, super cheap. I'll leave an Amazon link down below. Clug, 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 I was making the clug, clug sound effect there. I know, it's pretty good. More clugging. Now I have another gallon container to put old oil in. You guys ever get excited at home when you finish like the milk gallon and then you're like, uh, yeah, I'll take that to the garage, definitely. Part store people, they don't like that. <laughs> ah, it's, that wasn't as satisfying as I thought it would be on camera. Some things just don't, they just don't translate well on camera. I, just, I still have to clean this. It just can't show you guys really that well. Just a lot of this and a lot of that. We're ready for our mint condition high flow air filter right after we do just a little spray of the oil don't use too much that's good and that helps catch all of the particles on mass airflow sensor cars it can oil up the mass airflow sensor which is bad usually not a big deal that's all you need so now we can pop this in plus a lot of horsepower potentially in this case all right and here's our connector for the intake air temperature sensor and let's wake this thing up she's alive electrically All right, runs great. It would have fired right up, but I was holding the accelerator pedal all the way to the ground. That is a flood mode, so it won't actually start that way. I just wanted to crank the engine over a couple times before it fired, but yeah, we're in good shape. No smoke out the back too. Sometimes you get that when you clean the valves. If you guys are wondering why this cover is on, listen. See how loud that is? It's a high pressure pump for the direct injection. That would have been one of those things like your normal everyday person would, would hear and complain about, so. They put a little insulation there. So you guys remember when we were at the Nissan dealer that I didn't have any pressure. I still don't have any pressure when this thing is fully warmed up and these caps can go bad and just bleed pressure off. So I bought a new one and that should fix it up. Although I wasn't having any issues at all. There we go. But that could simply be because it's kind of cold out and you need pressure in the cooling system to raise the boiling point of the coolant and water mixture. So right now, since it's cold, it's probably not that sensitive, but this is a good thing to change out every once in a while. All right, everything's wrapped up under the hood. It's running great and we gotta do an oil change. I always do when I buy a new car. Let's see what we got. And can I aim this one? Probably not. Gonna make a mess, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> little Paxton for three right there. Get it right in. Looks like old, old oil. Not too old though, smells great, love it. I think the last oil change was like 5,000 miles. They were really religious with that, so that's good. Time to remove the filtration device. Oil filter, 
That's what this is. Motorcraft dealer. Well, let's tighten up the drain plug. Don't ever walk away from an oil change. Don't forget to tighten that. There we go. Oh, I got oil on the outside of the oil pan. I don't know if that's ever been done before. It was just so nice and dry. Although it looks pretty sweet like that. I'm gonna polish my oil pan out. You know we're using the AMS oil and they have a high mileage motor oil as well with a few extra additives. And I am going to pre-fill this oil filter. Check in the comments. It'll be a debate, pre-fill or no pre-fill, but I pre-fill when I can. The ones you screw in directly from the bottom, you can pre-fill. If it's like a side-mounted filter, you get oil everywhere. I tell you, an oil filter is by hand. You don't need to go nuts. That's perfect. And now one of the most satisfying things to do, refilling your own oil. Just giving your engine new blood. And in this case, some really good quality blood with AMS oil. Ugh, it's just like cracking a cold pop on a a hot summer day. If you guys are new, I use AMS oil in every one of my cars. I do think it is the best synthetic oil in the world. There are a ton of third-party studies that agree. AMS oil wins pretty much all of the battles. And if you guys wanna save 25%, I will leave you a link down below. You can become one of my preferred customers and you basically get wholesale. Like I save like I think a half a percent more being a AMS oil dealer than the preferred customers. It's an amazing program. It ships right to your door. It's the best stuff in the world. Oh, and even if you guys don't use AMS oil, just use their website. It's totally free and it'll give you all your fluid capacities and torque specs for drain plugs. So you don't have to search the internet for bad information on forums. You can get it right at amsoil.com and I'll leave that link down below. And you know what I just remembered is that I haven't made any show jokes yet because like every word rhymes with show bow low glow flow comment down below what, what else rhymes with show i mean the possibilities are really endless hang on we got to take a look at our brand new timing chain and guides look at that beautiful guide that's great guys oh we can even see a cam lobe there that looks all nice and shiny this has no sludge whatsoever looks so good look at the teeth on those gears they're perfect it's now time for our beauty cover which also has a ton of insulation. Oil cap, and hang on. I have just such a nice little canvas to work with. I gotta clean this engine cover. And I'm, I'm just gonna do a little mini engine detail. This stuff, Mudslinger, it's phenomenal for this. You guys may have seen me use this stuff, but it's meant for dirt bikes to keep mud off of them, Mudslinger but it's so good at detailing engines that have a lot of this black plastic. I promise this took like three minutes to clean up. This stuff is so, so good. Look at it, it doesn't even leave like any kind of goopiness or anything. It's perfect and it's totally not meant to be used in this way. But if it works, it works. Let's go drive my show. It's a lot nicer day today. Woo. Oh, it shifts great. Runs great. It's quick, 365 horsepower. That's not bad. All right, guys, we're not messing around. We're in sport mode now. Let's see what this feels like. Show power! Oh, the trans is great. Perfect. All right, that was 60. It, it feels phenomenal. It definitely feels better than before. I don't know if we really gained a ton of horsepower from, you know, the air filter and the valves. I'm sure in a dyno it would show up maybe like 10 or something. It's the butt dyno is difficult though, but this feels fantastic. Just runs and drives beautifully. 365 horsepower. It's definitely no slouch. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's see if we, let me, let me try something here. You, you know, I'm always thinking of mods. All right. Hang on a minute, I'm just curious, like if I were to get an air intake for the show, like an open filter air intake type of thing, would it sound cool? Let's see. I did this exact same thing with my wife's Cadillac Escalade on the dyno and it actually sounded pretty cool. So let's see what the show has to say. No, the, the show says no. I want to be really quiet. Okay, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Guys, the show gets up and goes. It's a very modest car, but it's beautiful. It's a phenomenal daily driver. I'm so happy that I got this. We fixed it for, you know, very, very little money, did a bunch of maintenance, and I'm going to pick up the family for dinner in this thing, like, tonight. So I'm going to go clean it up, and I'll show you guys a little mini show detail. <laughs> I gotta start by taking all this stuff off. I got stickers, these are horrible. Yeah. Oh. 
This is the worst. All right, 10 minutes later, that's clean. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna start off with this passenger seat. It looks like someone spilled coffee on an otherwise perfect seat. Let's see if we can get that out. Now we'll get a little bit of interior cleaner soaking in here. And then my trusty carpet cleaner. Should soak this coffee right up. Uh, this is looking so much better. Well, it's still got to dry, but we definitely got the coffee stain out. This looks perfect. This driver's seat's going to be a bit more challenging because this is just, you know, grease and dirt over 150,000 miles into suede. Well, let's see what we can do. Let that soak in. Yeah, I'm just going to hit this entire seat. And we'll agitate with our brush. And I'll start wiping as well. I sprayed it down a little bit more. Wow, are you serious right now? I only used the brush once. What? I didn't expect that to work that well and so quickly. Hang on a second, let me wipe this whole seat down. Are we done here? Guys, I seriously don't know what happened to all of that dirt and grease and oil. It's just gone, like this seat is clean. So this is what my driver side Taurus show seat looked like before. And here's what we have after. And honestly, this doesn't do it justice at all because it's pretty wet right now. So it looks dark in here, but it's clean. It's very, very clean. It's so nice when you buy a used car with these kind of floor mats. <laughs> so easy to clean and then the carpet in the car is going to be very nice usually. I've got the interior all cleaned up and drying. Foam cannon time. And this color is so good for a daily driver. I think this is going to definitely be one of those ones that just always looks pretty clean. Scrub a dub dub. Beautiful metallic gray. It's going to look so good. I mean, look at the headlights. They're not yellowed at all. Front bumper doesn't even need to be painted. This thing is in great, great shape. It is gigantic drying towel time. One swipe and it's dry. I'm all done with the show and hang on, let me get this outside for you guys. I'm gonna cut the cable from the auction. Okay, that took a little while. It was supposed to be way, way cooler than that. Yeah. All right, here's my beautiful key. Wow, it's in a great condition too. All right guys, it is the next day and here is our fully cleaned up 2016 Ford Taurus SHO. And I rushed home yesterday after cleaning up the car to pick up my family and to celebrate the Taurus by going to Joe's on Higgins. And if you guys are ever on the north side of Chicago, I highly recommend it. Joe's has been there since the 50s. It's phenomenal Chicago style food. But anyway, here I am in front of Joe's, happy as can be. I feel like I'm officially an all-American dad now that I drive a Ford Taurus. I drive a Dodge Stratus. <laughs> Do you guys remember that Will Ferrell skit on SNL? I drive a Dodge Stratus. That's basically me now, and I'm happy as can be with this car. It is smooth as glass on the highway. It's got so many cool features. Let me just show you the final car and uh, some of the features I discovered last night. Now, I know my Taurus has 154,000 miles, but you would never know. If you guys saw this in person, you'd understand. It is just clean as a whistle super straight. The paint shined up just perfectly. An excellent daily driver type of paint color. The headlights aren't faded at all. I mean, the front bumper has got a couple little, you know, rock chips or anything, but nothing, like nothing I really have to do much about. And these are optional 20 inch wheels and they're in great condition. Good tires as well. It's already got tinted windows and it's just Ah, I'm in love, guys. This thing is awesome. So I bought this car for 5,900 bucks with auction fees. It was 6,200. And I think this would sell a private party just as is right now for like 11,000 or something. But you guys can definitely get a show in that $6,000 range that's in pretty good condition. It might just be a few years older. This started in 2010. And then in 13, they did a facelift. And so this one's, I think, even more updated than that. But you can get one of these cars for six grand, like all day. I spent a couple of hours in the interior, so it's pretty much minted out in here. But check it out. We have push button start. We have an amazing sound system from Sony. Sounds really good. You guys know about the heated steering wheel and the seats and everything. You know about the massage seats which works so well. 
and my wife was enjoying that on the passenger side. It's got passenger massaging seats. But check out all this stuff that I found yesterday. It's got all the cool driver assist features, blind spot, cross traffic, rear parking aid. This is a touch screen. The backup camera is awesome. It's got a sunroof with a black headliner. Oh, and check this out. It even has an optional sunshade. Look at that. I have the window sticker for this show. It was like $45,000 loaded up in 2016. The kids are telling me this is now their favorite dad's daily driver because of these seats. I mean, the padding and everything, you just, you gotta try it. I didn't clean the trunk out just yet, but look at the size of it. It's insane. Like if this car was in the Sopranos, they could fit like probably six to eight bodies back here. This also has totally keyless entry, so you can lock the door with that and then it just opens. You don't have to ever take your key out or the Ford keypad. Phenomenal feature. If you forget your keys or whatever, you can type in your code and get in. And speaking of keys, I already got the legit three cars key tag. And now to give our twin turbo 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine even more power. Legit three cars sticker, bam. Plus. 11 on this car. Earlier in the video, I made the case that the show is very similar to the GTR, which it is, but you know what's even closer is a Q50 from Infiniti. Those things can be super fast, four door, you know, Nissan product. But anyway, I absolutely love my GTR and I absolutely love my $6,000 Ford Taurus show. New GTR content is coming very, very soon and I'm not exactly quite sure yet if I'm gonna do anything to the show. I just. It's a great daily driver as is, but I'll probably get the itch to make it go faster. We'll see, comment down below what you'd like to see me do to the SHO. And also give this video a big thumbs up if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel if you're new, share this video if you enjoyed it. I think I did that backwards, I don't know. But most importantly, have a fantastic day and I'll see all of you in the next video. All right, this might take me a couple times, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> Six speed transmission with paddle shifters. Oh wait, a uh, car. Okay. Paddle shifters, a cool push Barton. La, ah. Barton. And this car has a really loud semi truck engine built in to ruin the scene. Okay. So, um. We're not gonna take these. Blah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a minute to just look. I'm gonna cut the cable from the auction. Okay, it's supposed to be one snip. It's walnut. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. All right, if you guys stayed past the bloopers, then you get a sneak peek at what I'm doing literally immediately after filming that outro. I came back uh, with the GTR and the show, and I had this guy waiting for me with a steam gun. <laughs> so we are gonna try and de-ricerify. That's a new word. So this stuff here, I mean, it's not, it doesn't look horrible. They just did a bad job at it. So everything's just been done poorly as far as the cosmetics. So Jason and I are gonna be working on this in the next GTR video, uh, along with a bunch of other stuff in that video as well. We're gonna be by Fluid Motor Union with the GTR so you know what's going on there. And then the beginning of that video, which I already filmed, is awesome. We start off at AMS Performance for a new tune. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on with the GTR. Uh, and as far as everything else, I can't give it all up, but I got new wheels for the Eclipse. If you guys saw the teaser in the last video, you know we're doing big breaks on this. The Mustang, I did finally get all of the trans transmission parts. So I had the vast majority of it, but there's like 50 million individual parts inside of a transmission. So if you're missing one little thing, you're kind of dead in the water. So I do have everything for this now, but I have to get super prepared for that video because I've never rebuilt one of these transmissions and there's a ton to doing that. So I just, it's gotta, it's very systematic. I, I gotta be perfect. And yeah, that's about it really. Uh, this guy is officially for sale. I haven't done the listing yet, but if you guys are interested in a really cool supercharged C4 Corvette, email me at legitstreetcars at gmail.com. Uh, this is uh, getting some work done to it uh, soon. In about two weeks, I'll be at DeLorean Midwest with the DeLorean. Anyway, guys, that's about it. Thank you so much for staying after the bloopers. Have a fantastic night or day or middle afternoon. I, I don't know where are you guys watching from. Let me know in the comments, but uh, I'll see you in the next video.